Today we're going to take a look at a game that I played extensively way back in my early computing days. I'll start by talking about my very first, um, well, not my first computer, but my, my second computer, the one that I actually used growing up. It was a 1987 Ericsson desktop PC, Swedish built for perfection and precision, um, that was given to me by a neighbor. Um, it turns out another neighbor of mine, the very person who taught me how to use DOS and WordPerfect, took this computer and rebuilt it for me with a fresh copy of DOS 3.3 and a couple of other programs that he had lying around. Now, he was an older gentleman, an old Navy veteran, who's still alive today, and um, he didn't really have much in the way of games. But he had one game that he gave me. It was called Turbo Champions. And this game was a very simple racing game that worked very well under the XT platform. It only required a modest 640 kilobytes of RAM and a CGA monitor. It could run on just about anything. And um, I played this game for hours and hours on end. Okay, not consecutively, but it was the game that I played the most. Because it was the only one I had. Oh no, I take that back. I also had a copy of Pango and Zaxxon. Some of you may remember those two. They're very, very popular games. Um, or they were. Turbo Champions is a game that I, I lost um, during the great diskette uh, failure of 2003 or so. <laughs> what happened was I left my collection of floppy diskettes in my parents' basement for about five years. And that was enough to destroy them to the point where they would just never work again. And um, including my five and a quarter inch original copy of Turbo Champions. So fast forward to a couple of weeks ago. I thought to myself, I wonder if I could ever find another copy of that game again. I couldn't think of the title. The only thing I knew was the author or one of the uh, programmers or developers. His name was Graham Devine, and I only knew the name because it was the odd, well, it's an odd name to begin with, especially in this country, but it was also unusually spelled. So I went online and did some Googling, and within a few seconds I actually found a web page featuring this gentleman, who I believe is from England, and um, I said the heck with it. I, I actually I found I, I think I found his um, his personal web page. I shot him an email and I said, "Hey, you wrote a racing game in the 1980s, and I can't find a copy of it. Would you happen to know what it's called so I can at least start my search?" And he said, "Absolutely." The game was Turbo Champions, and he even toyed with the idea of porting this game to the iPad or iOS. And I thought that was really interesting. I'm sure he doesn't get very many res many requests for this game, but at least I was able to find a copy of it through the Abandonware websites, and uh, I've now copied it over to my Tandy 486, and here's the floppy diskette I made with it, and we're going to play the game and take a look at it. Now, I should point out that this game works really well on computers that are older than, or slower than 286s. It was designed for the, I believe, the 286 platform. Um, it'll work on a 386, but on a 486, especially a powerhouse 66 megahertz clock double 486, doesn't work so well. Now, there are applications you can use that will actually slow down the clock speed of the PC to emulate an XT um, or a 286, but I don't have one of those right now. So. We're going to just launch the game within Windows. It works just fine. And it's called Turbo Champions. Here is the splash screen. Now, this is a little bit different from the version I remember playing, because I know the version I had, you didn't have a choice between keyboard, joystick, or mouse. I think this might be a later release. Um, mine was merely a keyboard-based game with a track editor, which we have here. 
and I'll show you that too. But look at the graphics. These are designed to display very well on a CGA monitor or an EGA monitor. Uh, the colors were very bright, usually heavy on the pink and the indigo. Or would that be? Uh, uh, that would be kind of um, kind of an indigo, yeah, or light sky blue. So we're going to choose keyboard play because that's the way I remember playing it. I did play it with a mouse, and it was kind of awkward. So this is the splash screen that I remember seeing. You can choose your display settings. We're going to use EGA because it's the closest thing to the EGA we have here. Okay. Now that shows you a demonstration of the race. When I hit a key, it brings me to the race or road construction kit. And here we go, written by Graham Devine. I think it's pronounced Graham. By Mastertronic Incorporated of 1989. Okay. The road construction kit sent me back to a DOS prompt. That might be because I never set the working directory. Who knows? Whatever. Alright, let's go back to it. Uh, EGA. And this is the demonstration of the game. We'll do a race. Now, this is the track editor. It allows me to choose which tracks I, uh, I, ha I, can, I can play on. So if I select one using the plus key, I can select another one, which will add on to that track. It's really interesting how the game is made. Um, what's going to happen is it'll, it'll follow this track. Can you see my finger? Yeah. And then it's going to continue on to this track. It's kind of interesting. Um, we're done, so that's what we do. So now I'm racing. I'm racing away on my 486, and uh, the game works okay on a 486, but it clearly moves too fast. Normally this game goes very slowly. Um, it's, it's, uh, let me just put it to you this way. Playing it on a... Um, on an 8086 or an XT is a completely different experience. But I could play this game for hours on end, even though it's it's probably one of the most rudimentary racing games I've ever seen. Oh yes, and if you meet the checkpoints, the clock advances or continues on. It's very easy to crash. Um, let me just put it to you frankly, the game sucks. But if you have an older XT machine and you want something to throw on there as a little mind-numbing uh, game just to horse around with, you can't go wrong with Turbo Champions. It is actually a lot of fun. Now, like I said, this game has um, a few features that I don't recall in my version, like the puddles. Maybe they were there, maybe they weren't. But then again, I was playing it on a CGA monitor, so maybe the graphics were a bit different. I don't know. So right now we're in EGA graphics mode. So why don't we do this? Why don't we go take a look at what the game looked like in CGA? I bet you it was a little bit different. Yeah, this is what I'm used to seeing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's more like it. This is what the game looks like if you're playing it on a CGA monitor. Uh, fewer graphics, you have the lines disease. I mean lines in the display. I call it lines disease. Um, but that's what it looks like, or that's what it looked like when I played it on my little Ericsson XT Swedish built uh, computer system. Yeah, this is definitely what I'm used to seeing. Okay. But this sucks. Let's play it in EGA mode because that's just way more fun. There we go. I wonder what Tandy Graphics looks like. I think that was for a handy graphics card that was like a high-end EGA or something. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, it's not compatible with my graphics card, so it's not going to happen. Alright, so that was that's that. All right. Now let's try it with a mouse. See if it's any more awkward or less awkward. We have mouse control. We don't need no mouse control. Alright. Still have to use the keyboard to select, so... There we go. It 
it's really awkward. You can't really hear it, but there's crashing sounds. Whenever you crash, it goes... Okay. It spun out. Man. That's another thing, is I don't remember there being sounds in the game at all. I remember it being completely silent. Well, nevertheless... I, I played this game on a variety of machines. Um, for example, my, my Zenith Lunchbox Portable. Um, the game would run right from a floppy diskette, so you didn't have to worry about installing it to a hard drive. It was so small. It's only 128 kilobytes, I think. Really not much there. <laughs> it's a very small game. Um, but I would play this on my little Zenith Lunchbox, and... Um, and it was, uh, it was, it was, it was iffy because the Zenith lunchbox, the very first one that they had released uh, with an LCD screen, the display was actually like a widescreen designed for word processing only, and um, and it was only a monochromatic, super twisted STN display, super twisted pneumatic is the term they used, and the. Um, it didn't really display half tones or grayscales very well. Actually, it didn't do them very well at all. Um, and we have lost the game. So yeah, of course I don't have any of those laptops left to show you, but it was really awkward because the car would be like six inches wide or whatever, and <laughs> it was just like really screwy. Okay, I think that pretty much covers it. Turbo Champions. I suggest you guys download it for yourself. And those of you who do not have a DOS machine to play with or an older computer of any kind, you can certainly play the game uh, within DOS box or in a virtual machine environment. And you can always change the clock speed of the CPU. I would suggest running it at around 4.77 megahertz. Um, you can run it at 12 megahertz, but anything faster than that, it's going to get a little um, carried away. I run too fast, like you saw with my example. So, with that, 